Well, this is a this is a daily Taoist here. Tell everybody. This one I got right here today is okay. I'm not sure how much to say, but here we go. Number 16 of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, and uh, based and this, we're reading my book, my version of it called The Tao of Taoism, uh, using the Tao Te Ching to improve your life. And so here we go, number 16. I'm Richard Del Connor, Buddha Jin, and oh yeah, I should be doing a commercial. Go to ShaolinInteractive.com, and for a thousand bucks, sign up for one whole belt rank. It's like I don't know how many videos per each one. Um, a lot, like 80 videos per each belt rank. So 80 videos and the actual, I mean, they give you uniforms and all kinds of stuff under that price. So the, the actual cost of the classes comes out to like $5 a class, I think, something like that. <laughs> so that's a good deal for each video. And each, they start like 45 minutes and go up to like two hours. So. But anyway, ShaolinInteractive.com, my commercial. All right, Buddha Jen here. The Daily Taoist, let's get back to number 16. This is a tough one. That's why I was kind of perplexed. All these things I was thinking real fast. But let's get this out of my system. That's why I'm here and getting this book out of my system. I'm learning. I'm learning along with you. I wrote this book years ago, but the idea here is to learn how to use it to shape your life. Look, it's all blanks, more blanks than words. Here we go, number 16. Being aware of the nature of events. Remember, I use nature wherever you might use the word Tao. The Tao of events, and that's too confusing. The nature, mother nature of events, is to accept not only the completion of events, but also the declines of success. Let's can finish this. This is the one to unpack. There's a lot here. To be absorbed by achievements or cling to rewards is to decline with them. Okay? That's like, uh, I don't know, off the top of my head, a boat. <clears throat> if you uh, built a boat, okay? So um, to be absorbed by your achievements, okay? I built a boat. I want to tell everybody I built that boat. Ten years later, I built a boat, okay? Uh, maybe it even won an award in a race uh, ten years ago. I, won a, I built a boat and it won a race twenty years ago. Is to decline with them. Okay, well, maybe that year, that was great. The next year, I was like, yeah, that was last year. What are you doing this year? Well, that's, I'm talking about last year, two years later. I, two years ago, yeah, we already, we already told us. Three years later, hey, I built that boat that won three years ago. Yeah, I know, we, we already, already told us, okay? And you meet somebody 10 years ago. I built a boat and it won a race 10 years ago. Oh, okay, good. So once again, you can see kind of the decline in appreciation, the clinging to that event. And in the martial arts world, I've been very impressed or unimpressed or disappointed to watch how people have clung to their rewards or their awards that they received 30, 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> what have they done since then? So um, uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. To, so you got to move on. You got to keep getting new awards, new rewards, like an actor. So what if you won an Academy Award in 1989? You know, it's 2020 now. What are you going to do now? Well, you're retired. Okay, well, then that's fine. Let's, let's, Okay, if you're not going to do anything, then good. That's time to look backwards. But if you're still moving forwards, then let's keep looking at you today and forward. Okay, okay. so let's read that one more time. Being aware of the nature of events is to accept not only the completion of events, okay, building the boat, and maybe winning a race, but also the declines of success. Okay, to win is great, but if you're not going to keep winning, then the new winners, you know the winner. Okay, to be absorbed by achievements or cling to rewards, or awards, as I put it, is to decline with them, okay? And even a reward, hey, yeah, I made a thousand bucks off that, that race. Okay, well, what's that worth now? Well, if you invested it, but don't get, don't get corny. <laughs> All right, that thousand bucks is gone, you spent it. So let's go, here we go real fast. Uh, it's already been four minutes, I'm kind of trying to figure out how long it takes to make this show, because I'm gonna record a real audio book. Do you appreciate a third place winning as much as a first place winning and why? Do you appreciate, appreciate a third place winning as much as a first place winning and why? Do you work harder to win something that you normally work at some, at similar things and why? Whoops, let me read that one again. Do you work harder to win something than you normally work at similar things and why? Oh, okay, so if you want to win something, do you work harder at it than something else you do very similar? Okay, but in order to win, do you work harder? How quickly do you move on to another goal 
when one goal is completed? How quickly do you move on to another goal when one goal is completed? How do you know when one goal is completed? How do you know when one goal is completed? How do you decide, how do you decide what your next goal is? How do you decide what your next goal is? How obligated do you feel about continuing what you're already successful at? Eh, I remember I told you about people that ride that old success. How obligated do you feel about continuing what you've already been successful at? Uh, that was one of the things I was explaining in a previous podcast. I didn't want to become successful at being a television repairman because that success was going to hold me back. It wouldn't, it wouldn't propel me forward. Not where I wanted to go. How do you feel about other people, how do you feel other people view you after winning or achieving something? So when you win or achieve something, like you run a race, and then you win, how do you think people look at you and, and, and talk about you and think of you? Do you feel required to continue a success for family or friends? So if you did win that way, race, then all your friends and family are going to expect you to keep winning it over and over, right? And how are you going to satisfy that? Whatever it is that you've done successfully. Maybe it's making a bunch of money in a business deal. Must you display your trophies prominently? So, do you feel compelled? Do you have all your stuff out? I do have some of my stuff out, but uh, it was kind of interesting. As I was putting it out, I was kind of realizing how I was kind of saving certain things for when I was a senior and I was retired. And I thought, hey, I'm a senior. I'm not retired, but <laughs> I think I'm 66 years old. I was planning on packing this stuff 10 years ago because I thought I was going to retire at 55. I thought that was going to be over the hill. And here I am, 66, starting a Kung Fu program, ShaolinInteractive.com. I've also got some free website, uh, free the first five classes. You can go to ShaolinKungFuBeginner.com and take those. And then retake them at ShaolinInteractive.com and keep going for 190 videos. Okay, so where are we? And you only get like three a week. So it's going to take you a long time. Think of it as a lifestyle. Is that my heater? I think I turned it down to 75. Okay, so it wouldn't turn on. Okay. Um, do you feel you must meet standards represented by your awards or successes? And how long do you discuss your winnings and achievements after they've occurred? So well, we're talking about how you deal with it and connect to the past. Okay. What organizations are you a member of and why? And I gave like four lines. So, I mean, you don't have time to, maybe you're driving or something. I don't want you to get in a car accident. But anyway, think of your organizations that you're a member of and why are you a member of those organizations? A couple I've dropped out of over the years, like SIMTI, Society of Motion Picture, Motion Picture Television Engineers, or and television engineers, motion pictures and television engineers. When I even went to UCLA and graduated, I had to choose between television or motion pictures. They were totally separate, video and film. So now they've kind of merged. <laughs> Everything's digital now. Um, but uh, you had to go one way or the other. But SIMPTI, the that Society of Motion Picture, Tele motion picture Televi and Television Engineers, I used to be a member of. When I graduated UCLA, I was part of that. And I had to think, well, gosh, I'm not really working in the industry anymore in the 90s, you know, and I had to pay up uh, annual dues. It's only like 30 bucks, but when you really get poor, it can seem like a lot of money. Sorry, I digress. Where are we? What organizations are we? Okay, which of these organizations no longer serve a useful purpose for you? Eh, I just answered that one for me, you personally. What organizations um, would serve you better that you're not a member of? Okay, so rethink that. You know, things have changed. I do Kung Fu, so I've been looking for Kung Fu organizations to join. And I found a few of them. And uh, most Kung Fu people, I guess, are kind of poor like me, and so they're not putting out a lot of member, because it takes a lot of money to run an organization, and then when you throw those banquets, you gotta pay like 50 bucks, and 50 bucks for a dinner is way out for me, and then to contribute to the organization so they can do some paperwork and letterhead. I don't have that money to help them. Not that I, so I don't begrudge them for wanting membership fees and to pay for these annual banquets. I just 
looking forward to being able to afford them. And then I'm going to join some. Uh, what achievements pertain to your new goals? My new goals. Well, if I was to say that goal of joining those organizations and attending more of their events and tournaments, then it just, um, yeah. So the achievements I need is selling some classes and getting recognized as a cool online Shaolin Kung Fu Kwun, which means school. Lastly, what new goals would benefit from which new achievements to be attained? What new goals would benefit, okay, so what of your new goals would benefit from these new achievements that you want to attain? Gee, that was a complicated question. So in other words, well, you gotta look at that. You gotta look at them snowballing. You, you finish one movie as an actor, you, you gotta start thinking of the next one. You don't just start talking to everybody about that movie you made 10 years ago and keep talking about it. You gotta go on to that next goal. So if you can, you wanna leverage each achievement to kind of springboard you into the next one. So, hey, this movie I'm in, you know, you, it's like this movie, you know, so you're already pitching for your next movie before you even finish it. And then when it's done, you know, hopefully you did a good job and you want to hurry up and, and get a job while everybody's excited about it because a year later it's like, oh yeah, you made that movie a year ago. Didn't do anything since then. So, you know, you want to kind of keep moving forward. There's my suggestion. That's how you want to be a Dow. The Dow of an actor is really to keep moving and not just keep talking about that one movie you made. You know, you just want to keep moving. Now. No matter how good a movie you make or even if you get an Oscar, you can't look at that as your peak. It's just another movie you make. going down the line. Okay, but you obviously leverage them, you know, use the Tao to play with them. Here we go. The Daily Taoist, Buddha Jen here. See you on our next Daily Tao.